Hey guys, what's up? Noi here. Thanks for watching my channel. And uh, if you haven't already, Instagram. I'm on Instagram now. So follow me there. I post there all the time. It's usually um, you can get a glimpse of what I'm working on way before I upload it on YouTube. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, <clears throat> a lot of things have been happening. I've heard uh, lot, lots of good news coming, coming my way, which I, I can't talk about right now. But ever since I started drawing again, people have been uh, uh, noticing that I've been active again. So it's going to be pretty exciting um, the rest of the year, leading into the next year. Um, I'm super stoked, actually. I'm on a bit of a high. I can't believe things are happening, but they are, and I'm really excited. So in this episode, we're going to be doing a speed painting of that, if it will focus here, there you go. That handsome fellow right there, I was going to call him a young man, but he's really not young because he's like part vampire. It's Alucard from the hit series on Netflix. Castlevania, that's it. I've always been a huge fan of Castlevania. One of my favorite games of all time. Something about like not being able to reach a certain area until much, much later on until you get like that awesome grapple hook or sword or something like that. It's so crazy. It's, it's fun to me. Um, if I was to make the perfect game, I think I was asked that question before by a, by a, by a company. I was applying for a job, and he said, Name your perfect game. What would you make? And I said, I would make a Castlevania clone. And um, they never called me back. So maybe, maybe you don't say you're going to copy somebody. That's a bad idea. But it was coming from a good place, you know. <laughs> I thought it was anyway. I'm a bit tired right now. I just woke up. It's pretty early in the morning. So, just bear with me. I'm trying to be as upbeat as I can, you know. This early, it's impossible. And um, it's actually impossible in general for me. Because I just... I'm like Eeyore. I'm like the uh, human version of Eeyore. And this is how you do this. And I am happy. Okay, anyway, let's start this video. Because we're already two minutes in. Over two minutes. Two and a half minutes. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> Yep, just sketching poses, like always. And um, I'll go through a few of these, I think. Some of you mentioned that uh, you get anxious when I do this. I, I just, I'll start drawing. Um, and you guys are like, that was an awesome pose. What are you doing? Don't erase that. Um, that's the good thing about drawing digitally is that you can do that. It's easy. You just do it. Cut it out, erase it. If you don't like it, redraw it. It's not a problem at all. In this phase, it should be quick anyway. You shouldn't have to dwell on it too much. Um, if I was doing this on paper, I wouldn't be able to do it actually on paper because um, you know you can only erase a certain amount of time before the paper develops a hole in it. So yeah, working digitally has kind of changed my life. And a lot of my friends made fun of me. They're like, you know, if you're not gonna draw, Regardless, you know, the Mobile Studio Pro is just a tool. If you don't enjoy drawing or you're not going to draw, you're not going to draw no matter what. <clears throat> and I think you're wrong there, guys. It's um, making me draw a lot more because I'm a lazy person. I hate erasing. And I hate, I'm a perfectionist, so I hate erasing and going back and over and over again. But what drawing digital has been able to help me do is it alleviated all that. All the anxiety is gone, and I can make as many mistakes as I can, and it's awesome. And yeah, I mean, you can draw it. If you don't like the proportions of the head, it's too long. I think I do it here, actually, if I remember correctly. You can cut out a portion of yeah, right there, and distort it to a state that you like. Um, many digital artists already know this. I still have a lot of friends, most of them actually, who insist on drawing by classic means. And, you know, much respect to them, that's amazing. But at the same time, don't be so closed off on on doing digital artwork. I mean, don't knock it until you try it, as they say, right? Uh, I was a classic artist as well, I drew everything. You know, I used to be a painter, I graduated from art school, like classic art school, where I would do paintings. <coughs> I didn't go to a design school or anything like that. I mean, in Toronto, you either go to OCAD, which is Ontario College of Art and Design, 
or you go to Sheridan, which is animation and I mean, if you want a career, you go to Sheridan, essentially, because Disney and Pixar and all those guys, that's the same company now, isn't it? Yeah, but anyway, they go and they scout straight from that school, and you go there to learn, you know, concept art, animation, mostly animation, but I think now they've expanded to other things. But yeah, if you wanted to make money doing art, artwork, you go to that school, and OCAD, um, which is um, the school that I chose, because my brother went there, I had no idea. But if you wanted to be a fine artist, you go to you go to OCAD. You want to paint like Picasso or, or whatever like that. And that's what I did. I did all that stuff. And I graduated from that school with a degree in illustration. Uh, with the hopes of getting into children's book illustration. Because I, I was really into that. Just techniques and brushes and all that stuff. Um, I was really into that. And since graduating... I kind of fell into uh, design and 2D animation by accident. I got hired, it paid me a lot of money, and I just stuck with it and I became good at it eventually. And uh, now everything I do is pretty much digital. I do want to go back to drawing with Copic. Copic? Copic. Cop Let's just say Copic. I don't know. Uh, markers, because I do like the look and feel of it. But for now, it's digital because I am actually being um, recognized for my digital work. And I'm learning a crap ton. I'm getting so much better at it. So I'm really excited about that. I'm drawing this face, and I don't think I was happy with it. I'm looking at it now, I'm like, it looks kind of boring. But yeah, drawing digitally. I can do that. I can go in and distort faces. Boring. Yeah, see, I wrote it there. I like the rough better. So that's a lesson right there. You know, if you're happy with the rough, Try to keep the same feel. Uh, try not to mess around with it too much. Keep the same lines, just adjust the width and just clean it up a bit. And that's what I did here. And look at it, like, if you look at it side by side, the one to the left is, is what I wanted. And I essentially drew, I essentially kept what I did um, in the initial rough. And um, I find that when you pan out, when you don't work so close, it helps a lot. Um, in establishing the perfect pose or the perfect gesture or the perfect expression that you want. Mm -hmm. See, I did all those um, eraser marks in the hair and I really like that texture a lot. And I wish I would have kept more of it. But um, my background in drawing is I, I love line work. I think I've mentioned it before. So I'm kind of addicted to it. See, I go in and I brush the lines. I should have just kept the hair as is. but. Also, my intent for this drawing was a cell shaded look. I really wanted to emulate uh, the, the animation, only my style. And that's what you guys should strive to do. If you if you want to emulate like a cell shaded look, don't don't try to emulate what's what you see on the you know on the cartoon, but try to do it in your own style at least. Yeah, I've come along. I've come a long way. I think um, I've been through a lot. I'm a lot older than I look. I sometimes joke about it to my friends that don't know me that well, but I am a vampire <laughs> or a grandpa. Well, I'm not a grandpa, but maybe a vampire. Um, bad joke. And it just paused. I probably went and went to the washroom or something. Okay, there I go again. Um, uh, overall, I, uh, I'm really liking this face a lot. It's probably, I haven't, it's been a while since I've been um, proud of anything I've done, but this face just, I love it. I got lucky, I must say. Sometimes you get lucky. <clears throat> yeah, it's with this piece that I, that I got recognized by somebody and I'm going to be doing some pretty cool stuff, guys. So if you haven't already, follow me now before I get super famous <laughs> and I won't talk to anybody which will never happen, I won't get ever get super famous. Um, I've been there before, I've, d I've done professional work, I used to draw a comic book, but that was a long time ago. I'm looking to get back into it though, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, just cleaning up the lines. I really like this, this part of the work, this went by quickly, I think I did this in like... I can't remember, maybe an hour, less than an hour? Just cleaning the lines up. Yeah, it looks like I took another break. Probably a washing break or something like that. <clears throat> I 
And next to it is um, good old Trevor Belknot, which I'm gonna. Up I don't think I've uploaded that drawing or that speed paint yet, but I'll probably do it before I upload this um, Alucard. I think my next one's gonna be. I'm gonna redo that tracer up there. Um, it's gonna be super simple. I'm just gonna over, um, over, overwatch, over trace. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to trace over that one that I've already done because I'm pretty happy with it. I might make the pose a bit more dynamic, but other than that, it's pretty much done already. Um, the reason why I want to do it is because I don't have it digitally, and I want to make it um, in a cell shaded style like this. I think it would be really cool. <clears throat> Yeah, this is coming along really well. I really, like I said before, I really enjoy this part of the um, drawing because there's really no thinking involved. You're just going in and inking over your um, your work, just cleaning it up. But notice how I'm varying the the line thicknesses and stuff like that, and that helps a lot to um, to create a, uh, some dynamics in the lines. But you might not want to do that. Um, a lot of people don't do that when they use the cell shaded. Am I using the right terminology? I don't even know. Like cell shaded? Would you call that cell shaded? Um, but anyway, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to it as cell shading. Um, they like to go with a more uniform kind of line. Just that's essentially one one weight for that. But for me, I prefer doing it this way. I think it I think it just looks more dynamic. Plus, like I said, I'm a line guy. I just love line work. <clears throat> and I think it's important to kind of vary the lines to make it interesting. <laughs> Let me know too, because I'm compressing this these movies pretty quickly. I'm trying to keep them under 15 minutes. So if it's moving too fast and you want to see how I do things more in detail, especially the coloring bits seem to go by really quickly. Because, well, they do. The coloring doesn't take as long as the, uh, the drawing. So I find that when viewing it personally from myself, the line, the, the color work goes by really quickly and you're like, you really don't know what's happening there. <clears throat> but there are some interesting tricks in there I've learned recently that I might get, may get in trouble by other artists for exposing, but uh, really quick ways of coloring and stuff like that. That make, that make it really easy actually. If, if you use these techniques, it just becomes super quick. <clears throat> it looks really nice. I usually draw weapons separately. I do this all the time. You'll see in my other paintings I haven't uploaded. I drew a gun. I did a Ghost in the Shell speed paint. Um, major. I th I, did I upload that? I can't even remember. Everything's a blur now. But yeah, now I'm just flattening. I'm flattening with a pen tool. I don't know how many of you guys do it this way, but I found this is um, this to be really quick. I think it took six minutes altogether when I was viewing it back, just to flatten, which I think is pretty quick, right? Then again, Alucard doesn't have a lot of colors. It's, it's essentially four colors, black, white, a pale, like a not so white white, and, and a yellow, I think. I really love this character. He's he's absolutely like hands down my favorite character in the Castlevania lore. Uh, pro probably because it's um, I love the game so much. Uh, the Symphony of the Night. I just love that game so much. I think I've played it like eight times. But yeah, Alucard is freaking badass, man. Like, how many Belmonts are there? There's Trevor, there's Victor. <laughs> That's all I know. I was gonna say Sebastian, but then I'm just making up stuff. This part's fun as well. Flattening colors is just brainless, like, um, brainless. I shouldn't say brainless. It's effortless exercise to me. It's when you get into it's the line art's the hardest, I find. Um, well, actually, the hardest for me is, is coloring. Uh, the painterly style of coloring. That's the hardest part for me. And then um, line art is also hard. And shadows, which, which I'm doing right now. 
coincidentally. So right now I'm going in. I, I drew. This is like a backwards way of doing it. Uh, I had to think really hard when I was doing this, but I'm essentially knocking out all the all the uh, the lights from a black. Usually you do the other way around. We start with a light and then you, you kind of draw in the uh, the shadows. But I'm I'm doing the uh, the opposite. For some reason I chose to do it this way. Uh, I don't know why, but in the end it worked out really well. So maybe I was onto something. So if you see next to it how I did um, good old Trevor there, I isolate the shadows and the colors. So when you do that, it's important because um, I find it helps you focus more. Um, it helps you focus on the shadows as opposed to having how the shadows go on top of the colors. So you do the shadows all one color, and then you do you apply a gradient to it, <laughs> eh? guys. This will save you a ton of time. And that's what it is. You do that and you put a multiply over the shadow. And my camera died. And I'm was all blown up. Okay, so what was I saying? How much time do I have left on this video? Not much time. 57 seconds, so. What was I saying? You would you do the shadow separately and then um, put a gradient on it. You put a multiply over the shadow, which makes the colors underneath pop through. And then you end up with a drawing that's complete. Like, look at that. That looks pretty completed, right? And I did a background as well after this, but I didn't record it for some reason. Because I suck at backgrounds. I didn't think it was going to turn out, but it turned out really well. And um, it's another technique I just learned on the fly, and I'm going to be using it a lot more. Okay, we're not drawing Alucard anymore, are we? We're drawing Tra Trevor. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be over soon. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, just cleaning it up, flattening all the layers, grouping them in folders, and that was it. Let me go back. I'm going to hold on that frame. Just so you guys get a close-up. Alright, cool. That's it. So overall, Really happy with the way he turned out. Much better than Trevor did. Trevor looks weird now or something. I gotta fix that hand back there and the hair is all wacky. Spent a whole time on that hair too. A lot of time on that hair too. <clears throat> but Alucard, I'm really happy with myself. Uh, one of my favorite drawings I've done in a long time. Um, I find that the uh, I captured his motion. Everything. I just nailed it right from the beginning. Um, the face turned out really well um, so yeah really happy with that and um, yeah what was I saying before I, I did a background really happy with that and actually got some recognition for this piece so I can't wait to uh, share with you guys my camera's crooked I just noticed very soon what is gonna happen super excited it's gonna be awesome guys Okay, so that is all. I think I'm going to close off that video. I have a ton of things to do. i got to edit another video together for work. Um, but yeah, if you like it, let me know in the description. Just talk to me. If you have any questions at all, If you, uh, let me know what you want to see as well. Because I don't know. Um, I still don't know what I'm going to do with this channel. I, I can keep doing this, but it's a bit redundant, right? It's just... Uh, here's not. I'm gonna speed paint another thing and talk over it. And this is a really, really boring voice. Maybe I should do a, a whole video like this, <laughs> and then decrease my viewers. Um, yeah. Anyway, follow me on the Instagram down there. I'll put it right down there. I really appreciate that. And um, like I said, I post things on there first. So is this thing focusing? I don't even know this camera is so finicky. I love it to death. It's the uh, Canon G7X. It's the de facto vlogging camera that everybody uses, I guess. Um, I kind of fell for it. I should have gotten the Sony, can't remember what it's called, RX100 or something like that. Because it shoots in slow-mo too. And uh, I've always wanted to kind of do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, until next time. Um, be safe and all that stuff. Okay? Bye.